killed tens of thousands. Saul thought, this guy's more popular than I am. Saul became jealous. He couldn't handle David's success. One day while David was playing the harp for Saul, trying to make him feel better, Saul took a spear and threw it at David, trying to kill him. David dodged it and barely missed him. When God promotes you, gives you more influence, you have to get good at dodging spears. Someone throws an insult, dodge it. Throws jealousy, tries to make you look bad, dodge it. Throws criticism, says things that aren't true, dodge it. The persecution is a sign that people can see the favor on your life. Saul wasn't throwing spears at any of his other men. He wasn't trying to stop his chief of staff, his lieutenant, his general. He saw something special on David. He could sense that David had greatness that stirred up the jealousy. And that's why he chased David through the desert. David kept dodging spears, doing the right thing when the wrong thing was happening. At one point, David had the chance to kill Saul. He found him asleep in the desert. It was his big opportunity to get revenge, but David wouldn't do it. He knew Saul had been anointed king. He wouldn't touch God's anointed. And eventually, Saul was killed in a battle, and David took the throne. You keep dodging the spears, overlooking the wrongs, staying on the high road, and God will take care of your Saul's. You have to get to the point where you're not moved by persecution. You're not bothered by the jealousy, not offended by what someone said, not losing sleep over those that are throwing spears. You know it's a part of the package. You can't be blessed without persecution. When those spears start coming, that means you're about to take the throne. You're about to see God's favor in a new way. Now don't get bent out of shape by who's against you, what they said, why do they leave me out? They can't stop your destiny. Where God is going to take you is going to require greater discipline, greater focus, and greater obedience. There will be plenty of opportunities to pick up their spear and throw it back, to live defensive, to get baited into conflict. Like with Isaac, when they see God show out in your life, favor you in the famine, prosper you in the pandemic, some people won't understand. They'll try to discredit you, find fault. Don't take the bait. Keep your heart pure. Be good to those that aren't good to you. Overlook what they said. That all used to bother me, but now I'm comfortable with persecution. I don't fall apart when things come against me. I'm not bothered by the jealousy. I've lived long enough to tell you God has the final say. He will take care of those that try to stop you. My question is, can you handle the blessing? Can you withstand the persecution? Keep a good attitude with negative chatter? Not be bitter over the jealousy? I already know the answer. Yes, you can. I'm looking at powerful people. I'm looking at focused people. And I'm looking at favored people. You've been graced for every situation. Now tap into that grace. Stay on the high road and get ready. I believe and declare because you can handle it, God is about to release a new level of blessing, a new level of resources, a new level of influence, anointing, creativity, something that you've never seen, favor that catapults you ahead in Jesus' name. And if you receive it, can you say amen today? Well, I'd like to give you an opportunity to make Jesus the Lord of your life. Would you pray with me? Just say, Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. Come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. If you prayed that simple prayer, we believe you got born again. We'd love to send you some new information on your new walk with the Lord. Just text the number on the screen or you can go to the website. I hope you'll get into a good Bible-based church and keep God first place. Victoria and I'll be right back to speak a blessing over you. Let me pray for you as well. If you have five minutes, we'll wrap it up. But Lord, thank you for what we've heard today. I know it falls on great ground. Faithful people here at Lakewood and many watching and listening. Lord, we all have people coming against us. We've all faced persecution. And Lord, I thank you that we're going out of here today knowing that it's just all a part of the package, that you're in control, 
that you will take care of the opposition. Lord, help us to stay in peace. Help us to even be good to our enemies. Help us to overlook it, Lord. I thank you, Father, as we do that, like you did for David, you will take care of all our souls. You will get us to where we're supposed to be. And Lord, I just thank you that every person under the sound of my voice will have a blessed week. Lord, that all the opposition, that the forces that are trying to stop them, Lord, we believe that it's been broken. Let them see your favor this week. Protect them, guide them, guard them, watch after their children. Show them favor at work, Lord. I think that you will reward them for being planted in the house of the Lord. With our heads bowed in prayer, just one more quick question. If your heart stopped beating in the next few minutes, are you at peace with God? Do you know where you'd spend eternity? If not, I would love to pray with you. I'm not here to condemn anybody. I'm here to help you find a new beginning. Now, I know this comes from a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. In just a moment, if you're not at peace with the Lord, or maybe you are a Christian, but you've grown cold toward God, you know you need to rededicate. You need to recommit your life to Christ. You need a fresh new start. If that's you, in just a moment, I'm going to ask you to take a step of faith and stand right where you are and we'll pray together. I can't think of a better time to get on the road to victory than right now. God is not mad at you. Your sins have already been forgiven. All you have to do is accept the free gift of Christ's salvation. Will you do it today? The enemy in your thoughts will whisper, do it later. Do it next week. Listen, the Bible says, today is the day of salvation. You're not hearing this by accident. Well, Joel, it's embarrassing to stand in front of everyone. Listen to what Jesus said. If you won't be ashamed of me before people, then I won't be ashamed of you before my Father in heaven. I'm going to give you a great opportunity to show God that you're not ashamed of Him. If you're not at peace with the Lord, or you just need to rededicate your life, you need a fresh new start, a new beginning. If that's you, would you be bold? Take that step of faith and stand where you are and we'll pray together. Would you do that? Come on, Lakewood. Let's give them a hand as they stand all over the building. Come on, don't put it off. I feel like there ought to be a few more. Who else wants to take a step of faith? Anybody else? Your heart's beating fast. Anybody else up top? How about watching and listening? You can just slip your hand up. Anybody else? Well, God bless you. Please remain standing if you don't mind. Let me tell you how proud we are of you. I know that.